Hi there. Welcome to New England, the home of lobster, clam chowder, and of course, our world famous Boston baked beans. Many families here still enjoy a long tradition from the days of the pilgrims of enjoying a Saturday evening supper of Boston baked beans, along with franks and steamed brown bread. This is a supper that simply can't be beat, especially if you make the baked beans from scratch. The beans slow cook in molasses all day, and when they're ready, they have a flavor that is unsurpassable. Once you've had this classic New England dish, you may never be satisfied with those canned baked beans ever again. You can certainly use beans from a can, but if you take the time to soak your beans overnight, you'll have the best tasting beans in the world, bar none. Traditional Boston beans use navy beans, though here we're soaking the beans in a salt water brine rather than just using fresh water. I found soaking the beans in salt water does a wonderful job softening the beans, and the beans won't be overly salty when they're cooked. We'll only be adding a little bit of salt to the sauce when we cook the beans, because that's all we need. We cover the beans and let them soak at room temperature overnight. About a 12-hour soak does a good job softening the beans without spoiling them. The next morning, we preheat the oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Then it's time to prepare the bean sauce. One tip to pouring molasses, be sure to grease your cup with a couple of drops of olive oil before pouring the molasses. This will let you pour the molasses into the bowl without having to scrape it out with a spoon. From here, we add kosher salt, black pepper, dried mustard, and tomato paste. A lot of recipes for baked beans use large amounts of ketchup and mustard, but I prefer to use the essential ingredients here. For a little extra kick, I use a combination of sugar and vinegar, plus just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And the secret ingredient, a touch of ground cloves. And we mix it all together into a thick and tasty sauce. Now all we do is chop up an onion and then we bring out the bacon. Traditional Boston baked beans use salt pork or pork fat. Here's how to slice half a pound of bacon. But there's certainly nothing wrong with using bacon here. By the way, the pork flavoring isn't just there as a bonus. It's an essential part of the taste of these beans. I've had the Boston baked beans made at the world-famous Durgan Park restaurant in Boston's Faneuil Hall, and I have to say I find their baked beans to be overrated. The additional pork flavoring just isn't there in their beans, though a Boston newcomer may not recognize this. Some baked bean recipes say to use the bean soaking liquid to cook the beans, but because we used a saltwater brine, we do have to discard the liquid and rinse the extra salt off the beans. And now it's time to bring out a cast iron Dutch oven. While the familiar ceramic bean pot can certainly be used to cook these beans, I prefer using cast iron because that's how it was done in the days of the early New England settlers. The beans would be placed in a bean pot and buried underground with hot coals surrounding the beans to slow cook. And you can't bury a ceramic pot in coals because it's likely to shatter. So the original New England bean pots were made from cast iron. After mixing in the bean sauce, we add the onions and bacon to the pot and mix it together. Now we add enough water to completely cover the beans. And then we cover the pot and into the oven it goes to slow cook for at least 8 hours. And now we can relax and enjoy the rest of the day. However, before supper is ready, we have something else to do. Boston baked beans are delicious by themselves, but if you want a real New England supper, then be sure to cook up some franks and brown bread to go with the beans. 
If you've ever wondered where the combination of francs and beans came from, it started here in New England. But while Boston baked beans are famous worldwide, you may not have heard of our Boston brown bread. This is a molasses bread that isn't baked in an oven, but rather it's steamed over boiling water like an old-fashioned British pudding. Unquestionably. Because this bread is steamed rather than baked, it doesn't have a hard crust on the outside and it's moist and soft. That's why it's actually traditional to cut this bread with a piece of string, though you can certainly use a knife if you prefer. Then we fry the bread with cream cheese, or you could use a toaster oven if you prefer. It's actually quite easy to make brown bread from scratch, but if you've never tried it before, be sure to find the genuine B&M brand brown bread in a can. Usually you'll find it at the supermarket right next to the baked beans. And at last our beans are ready. Now we get to uncover the pot and see this. After slow cooking for 9 hours, the beans are soft and tender, and most importantly, they're not dried out. It's time to enjoy a delicious supper of Frank's and Boston baked beans, along with our Boston brown bread. This is a dinner guaranteed to satisfy anyone's hunger on a Saturday night or any other night of the week. This is about as New England as you can get, and this is a recipe I'm proud to present here. I do hope you give this a try and make it entirely from scratch because it's really not that difficult, and as far as having supper on Saturday night goes, you can't do any better than this, whether you're here in New England or anywhere else. Thank you for watching.